Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Oh, hi, Rita. Come on in. See that little balloon? Yes. What's holding it up? Well, the water is coming out of this pipe I have stuck in this aquarium, and the water is shooting up and holding the balloon up. You know, like you, like you see in cartoons on television. You know, they always have a big stream of water, and it yes. holds the guy up, and he <laughs> falls over. Well, anyway, today, you, uh, you'll be able to explain that and understand it quite easily, I think, today, because today we're going to investigate fluids. And, le and that one's kind of messy. Come on over here, and let's have one that's a little easier. You see that... Um, bottle here. Mm-hmm. Would a you bottle please? Of water. Yeah, it's got water in it. Would you pour that water into that glass? Okay. Are you uh, dealing with a fluid, right? All right, water. Okay, well you're really dealing with two fluids. Two? Yes. I see one fluid. Uh, one what fluid, water. water. Oh, well here, would you pour that uh, uh, fluid back into the bottle? Notice, by the way, that this funnel has little fluted edges here. There's a little bump sticking up. Yes. And that sometimes it works better if you hold it up. Now, you only see one fluid? Right, water. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with you. I don't think you <laughs> even know what a fluid is. Now, wait, let's start again here. Would you please pour those two fluids? Two? I see one. Now, what are those bubbles up there? Well, that's the air. Oh? Oh. Uh, <laughs> now, if the water comes out, then air has to go in to push it. So you're pouring two fluids. Air, a fluid? Mm-hmm. But it can't be. Why not? What's a fluid? Well, a fluid is like water, gasoline, blood, and... Milk? All things you can see, that yeah. flow. Oh, well, what you're describing is not a fluid, but a liquid. But air, <laughs> you well, can't see it. That's right? what I'm going to see if I can't prove to you today that air is a fluid that flows like water does. Now, there are some differences, granted, but if I can do the same thing that we just did here with water, if I can do that with air, if I can pour it, then would you agree that it's beginning to look like a fluid? Well... Uh, where's the water? The water's in the glass. And where's the air? The air's in there. Okay, I'm gonna the pour bottle. them back. I'm gonna pour them back. Come on over here with me and you I'll show you. See this uh, aquarium? Yes. Okay. Now remember, glass with water in it, right. bottle with air. Yeah. Glass still has water in it. Water, no air. Bottle. Bottle is full of air. Full of air. <laughs> Am I not oh. pouring the air? <laughs> Yes, you Out of the bottle and into the glass? Oh, well. Oh, well what? <laughs> what was the bottle full of before? It was full of air. And what's it full of now? Water. And what was the glass full of before? Water. And, and it's full of air. And well, it's half full. Well. <laughs> and now it's full of air again. So that's the way we started over there on the counter, wasn't it? Yes, there you poured the water. Into I poured it like this, right. and now I just poured it this <laughs> way, but upside down. Now, well, isn't that a fluid? It is, but it, it can be. Doesn't seem like. Well, that's maybe because you think, uh, 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 I'll tell you what, if I did the same thing as I just did here, but did it with what you would agree is a fluid, a liquid, would you then uh, be more convinced? Yes, I, I suppose so. Okay, well, here's, a glass, here's a glass um, full of air and mm -hmm. a bottle full of a, uh, would you call that a liquid? Yes, I would. It's well, it's salad oil. Okay, salad oil. Let's fill the uh, glass full of water. Okay. Mm-hmm. And here is the bottle full of liquid. You'll agree that it's a liquid, but you don't want to agree that it's a that that it's a fluid quite. Well, you agree it's a fluid. I agree it that it's a fluid. Okay, now watch. I'll do the, exactly the same thing with what you agree is a fluid. As you I can't pour upside down. As I did with the air. Watch. Come on. Now, have you ever tried to pour a uh, a liquid out, out of a bottle when when the air couldn't come out? Do you remember? 
air has to get in. The air has to get in. In this case, what has to get in? Air? Water? Water. The oh. water has to flow in as the oil flows out. Now, let's see if I can get it started. Come on. There, when it drops, yeah? <laughs> There's another drop. In other words, the hole is so small inside the, in the side of the, uh... Mm. How to get out? Now, is it working on? Come on. Yeah, I'll see if I can put my pencil down there and get it started. Because I think I have a bubble of water. Oh, there it is. In the way, see? Mm. Well, it's <laughs> definitely now, going. Okay, now let me see if I can get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not proving my case too well, am I? Good, but I've got a couple of them. A couple more. Well, now, you see what I'm trying to do? I'm pouring the oil in the same way that I did the water. All I'm not doing is the same way as I did the air. I'm getting the oil or trying to get the oil to come out. It's not doing very well. In fact, here, let me try it a different way. It's a liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a fluid. Okay. It's upside down. Upside down. I got a lot of air. Now, you see how you were able to pour uh, the uh, oil in the same way that you were upside able to pour, pour it upside down. The reason for that is because it's lighter than water. Okay? Now, would you hand me that uh, saucer over there? There. One greasy cup or glass <laughs> full of oil. If, uh, you, you don't seem to be too convinced that uh, that air is a fluid yet. Oh, no. Air is no. a gas, isn't it? What would yes. you say if I poured a gas like you pour water, a liquid? Well, I'd be con convinced in a way, but well, how, can I, how can you prove it? Well, how I'll show I you. It? I'll show you. I will show you how you can pour gas like water and then it flows just like a fluid does. See, around, see you go around the other side over there by that screen. Here's a glass. What's it got in it? Air. A fluid. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to put another fluid into it, a different kind of gas. Okay, it's now nice and full. It's full? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look full to me. Exactly. And when I pour the gas out, you don't think that anything's coming out because you can't see anything. Well, now, that's true, but that's one of the reasons why you don't think of a gas as being a fluid, because you can't see it. But now I can rig it up so that you can see it. So here's the screen. So back here is a light, and it has this little tiny filament so that a, a beam of light will come out here that'll throw a nice sharp shadow here on the screen when I turn it on. See? Yes. Okay. Here's that glass. Now watch. What do you see? <laughs> I see it. I see the gas. Yeah, you can see the gas going on? <laughs> oh, I've got a nice glass oh, full. Oh, it's overflowing. <laughs> yeah, it's overflowing, like I was putting a hose of water into the glass. In fact, here is another glass. Now watch. This? Oh, it's unbelievable. Now, it happens that I can pour this gas, and you can see it rather easily because it is Freon, a kind of gas that is used in refrigerators, and it's quite heavy, and it's quite cold as it comes out of this container, so that means it's quite dense. Therefore, it's quite, you know, it sinks to the bottom uh, of this glass. Okay, there I poured a gas. Well, I've seen them in, the, you know, the radiators or fire. You can oh, wait a minute. feel it. Well, but that's going up. This case it was going down. Here, wait a minute, I'll show you one going up. Um, here, you want to look over here once? Here is a tank of water with a little uh, immersion heater in it, you see? And here is a 
heater for air, you know, that you use for, uh, um, to heat up a room, you know. Okay, I'm going to move those over here now, in front of the screen. Now, can you see them? Yes. Okay, now, I'll turn them on, and you tell me what happened. Look. You can see the, you can actually see the gas. Yes. It happens to be, well, if the gas is lighter, then it'll go up. That's right. What and is happening? That's going The gas wild. over here, you mean, over here? Yes. This one? Well, in this case, this is, a, uh, uh, we're heating up the air. And what happens when the air gets hot? Well, it uh, expands, it expands and it goes up. And the cold air pushes it up, that's right. So that's what's happening over here. And this is what you see over the radiator. And if you could look through a, a, a pot sitting on the stove, these kind of convection currents, they're called, would also take place in water. So here are two fluids, both being heated. Both the hot fluid is rising and the colder fluid pushing it up. Gravity pulling down on them both. So there they are, exactly. They're both, they're both fluids. But I'm not convinced it can be. Well, uh, here, let me turn on the... Uh, turn off the light here. And when I do that, my... Uh, well, I've got them all rigged up so these lights come on too. Now, the reason why you're, you're a little not, not too convinced is because when you think of a fluid, something that flows, you think of something you can see, because after all, this is what mm -hmm. you've had experience with, and that's why you think only of liquids as, as fluids. But actually, gases are fluids also. They flow. You just saw I poured them. You just saw I pour them upside down, uh, pour them right side up when they were heavier, and uh, convection currents take place in them. They work exactly, well, not exactly alike, but in many cases, they work very much alike and scientists classify them together as fluids. Then, scientists also did some experiments with them. They say, well, if we can do an experiment with one kind of fluid, we should be able to do it with another kind of fluid because of the very nature of the, of the fact that the material flows. So now, most cases uh, here, we did things with water and then tried to do them with air. Now let's reverse it. Let's do some things with air, some tricks, and see if we can do the same tricks with water. In other words, we're now going to get these fluids really to flow faster. Over there is a candle. See it over there? Do you want to light yes. it, please? All right. I think you've probably done this trick. You're supposed to blow the candle out? Oh, yes. That's through the bottle? Like you did the match? Okay, go ahead. Getting a little winded? <laughs> well... Well, instead of uh, stop blowing, because instead of doing it with our mouths and with our lungs, let's do it with this pump. This is a pump that uh, is a motor and a pump that when you turn it on, it blows out air. It's plugged in. Oh, hang on, I got another switch on. See? It's uh, blowing out here. Now, here, try this. Here, so every time I turn on the switch while we're turning on that supply of air, so you... Try and blow out the candle with that. Wow, it's over already. It's gone. Okay. Now, we should be able to do that same thing with water then, shouldn't we? We should be able to take a stream of water coming out of a nozzle like this, have it go around the bottle and see if we could blow out a candle if we wanted to have a candle. So you bring that bottle over here. I'll show you how we can get a stream that does the same sort of thing. Now, this aquarium here, see there's a pump down in here? Yes. Well, that pump is connected down here to this transformer. So when I turn on the, the current, that pump pumps water, and it comes out of here, and we have a stream coming out of here. So this time, instead of uh, having it go up like we did before, I'll direct the stream out of here, just like we did with the air, and you bring that bottle over and hold it right into the... Oh, it's doing the same thing as with the air. It's going around it like the air. It went around, and it candle. Yeah. Now, that bottle is a little wide for this stream, so let me turn it off. We'll take this glass, which is a little narrower. All right. Now, hold that up. Can you hold it with this hand? Okay. We're over on this side of it, over here, so you don't bump your hand up there. Oh, well, it's really going around. Isn't it, though? Yes. Now, if you had a candle here, it would go out, wouldn't it? Oh, definitely. All right. Now, in other words, what you have done in the past was to was to understand that that's what happens when you blow air, but this is, now you were able to see it. In other words, what you were doing over here was using this as a fluid 
And you could also see exactly what was happening. Well, not exactly what was happening, but similar to what was happening by using water to do it. So you understand now? We'll do some things with air, and then we'll do them with water. Uh, so that's blowing out the candle. Uh, let's try now a balloon. Here's the balloon. Let's tie it on the end of this thing. Can you tie it on there? Mm -hmm. About uh, a little closer. Okay. A little more. A little closer yet. About like that. Okay, now I'll turn the pump on. You point it down there at the balloon. Yeah. You can even step out here. Right. Point it down. Now slowly bring it up. The balloon's following it. Now point it straight up. Hold it right there once and watch this. Watch this one. Notice that the balloon is staying in the airstream in spite of the fact that I'm pulling down on it. There. You know why? Well, not... I, I, I don't know, because how can it stay there? It should go away. You'd think that the air would blow it away like right. that. Instead, you can, it'll stay on like this. In fact, you can hold it out like that. Well, this is because of a principle called Bernoulli's principle. He was a scientist who investigated uh, fluids in motion. And his principle states that when you get a fluid flowing, like this air, it's fluid, yes, when you get it to well. flow, that the pressure drops. And if you can get the air to flow over the top of this balloon, if the pressure will be lower here than the pressure is down here, because ordinary atmospheric pressure will be here. So if the pressure is lower here and higher here, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to push it up. It's going to, going to push it up, that's right. So it keeps pushing it up as following that low pressure area, and that's what makes it stay out like that. Now, we should be able to do that with water, shouldn't we? Water? Mm -hmm. Now, when you, you try this when you get out the garden hose sometime, and you're sprinkling the lawn or something, tie a balloon onto it and <laughs> aim the water at it, and it'll work. I don't want to do that inside here because it would get things a little wet. So let's do it, but keep just pointing it down. You want to take that balloon off and bring it over here? Right. Now... Now there's our stream. Just hold, bring the balloon up and hold it next to it. Turn around over here, Stacy. Now, you know, remember. Oh, it's staying there. See that? A fight. You don't even have to do this with a garden hose. You can do it in the bathtub. Get a balloon that's not, you know, too, and don't blow it up too much. Mm -hmm. The smaller the curvature, the higher the pressure over here. You know, the, or the higher the Bernoulli's, yeah. uh, the higher Bernoulli's principle states, the pressure would be. Look at the flange. And of course the balloon works well because it's rather lightweight. Other types of balls will work also, but you'll need more more water or more force. So there's the same thing happening. It's just the same as the air. Same as the, the air. Stream. And it would be if I could uh, do it like this, but we get water all over, so let's not. All right? So there we've done two things now. First with air and then with water. Now. Let's get to, to the, more, the more serious part, the one that has a, r a real practical application. So far, we've just been playing, but now let's do a practical thing. If you take a piece of paper and blow over the top like that, you know what happens, don't you? It, start, it rises? It rises. Yes. yes. Now, you know, that's, that's our old friend, Mr. Bernoulli, also. Let's do it with the pump this time. Okay, you hold the paper. In fact, roll it up. Roll it up this way. Now I'll bring the. Now I'm going like that. Here. Why does the paper stay up? I right, look. Yeah. You think I would be blowing down on it, yeah. just like the balloon? But if you're on top, then it's going up. Yeah. It must be the same principle. In other words, as the air is speeded up over the top here, it lowers the pressure all along here, and mm -hmm. the air underneath pushes it up. It up. And this is what makes an airplane wing fly. The air going over the top of the wing. Wow, look at that. Airplane wings don't look too much no. like that. <laughs> Waving like that. Well now, 
Let's do that with a wing. That was a piece of paper, which you can do, and you can just roll like this. Mm -hmm. Let's do it with an actual wing. A wing? An actual, a real wing. What did I do with it? Here it is. Had it hidden. See, there's a wing. Happens to be from a pigeon. Bird's wing. A bird's wing. And notice, I have it on a piece of uh, metal and a pivot here and a counterweight up above so that the wing is just heavier than the counterweight. Now notice the wing is also shaped like a wing, you know. Uh, it has a curve here, and when the pigeon flies through the air, his wing is moving forward this way through the air, but you instead blow air across his wing. Here, take it like this, and bring it down here just as you did with the paper. And hold it right like that, and then gradually move it up. And you watch what happens to the wing. It's coming with me. See how it goes up with me? Now take, take it, just lift the airstream up. Way up, way up. Just take it out of the way. No, I meant this way. And see, I wanted to see if the wing will fall. Try it again. Okay. Oops. Okay. My pivot is not too good. It should drop down by itself. Okay, can you bring it up? Uh, let it go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got underneath that time. That was the pigeon doing the loop. <laughs> now, the reason why this works, remember, is that as the air goes over the wing here, the pressure here is lowered. So pressure underneath here holds the wing up. Oh. And this is the way an airplane wing works, too. So that's how they fly. <laughs> that's how they fly. Well, in this case, the bird's wing flaps on the outside here, and that's what gives him forward motion. And most of the lift comes from the inside near his body because of that curve. Okay, now this is now a bird and an airplane and helicopters and various other kinds of... Uh, uh, airplanes and helicopters work the same way. It's the wing of the, or the um, rotor of the helicopter that works on this principle, and that's what makes it rise. Let's do it now with water. With water? How can yes. you get a wing in water? Well, we won't use a bird's wing, because that's supposed to be in air, but we'll use a different kind. See, here is a piece um. of wood shaped like a wing. And if I put that down here under water... I can set it down here like this, with this suction cup. And now, I have to direct a stream of water over that, and it should rise, just like the wing did, didn't it? Like the uh, pigeon wing. Let me move it back a little further. But I tried this earlier and found that this is not enough um, force, so I'm going to put a small nozzle on the water that's similar to the one in the air. And you watch. Now, when I turn on the pump, okay, stream of water. Just like the air. Just like the, the air. air when I put it underneath, you're not going to be able to see it because you won't see any bubbles. Okay, now watch. I'll slowly bring it down over the top of the wing, not underneath, and watch. Going up. Oh, I'm touching the bottom down here. Can't come up. Come on. Oh, that's going it goes. <laughs> just like just like you just did like with the, the with the wing, I'm doing it with the water. Now, have you ever heard of a hydrofoil? Yes, it's the um that boat. A boat, that's right. Well, it has pontoons on it that are under the water like this, and when they get going fast through the water, why well, it creates lift in water, just like this, and that's what makes the boat rise out of the water. They can get much faster speeds that way. It's just exactly the same, except exactly you same. can see it better yeah. here. Because, because both air and water are fluids. That's why. Well. Okay, <laughs> let's try one more. Uh, this time, here's a balloon, which, and I cut the mouth of it off after tying yeah. it, you see. And this time, we'll direct the air straight down on top like this and see if the balloon will go flying off the table. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't even flying. Okay, now move it one. Following me. Yes. Why is that now? What's supporting the balloon, first of all? 
the table. Yeah, but now why doesn't the balloon go flying off in uh, all different directions? Well, it has to be the same thing because the water and this well, has now, to be because of the pressure. Because the air is going all around here, if it tries to move, if the balloon tries to move in this direction, you're going to have a low pressure area on the side, aren't you? Yes. That means that the high pressure will push it back. Now, if it tries to go this direction, you're going to have low pressure over here, and it'll go so here, you see? Pushing on all sides. Now, what'll happen if we turn this up? Up? Like that. Whoa. Hey, I knew that was going to happen, so I have another balloon the same size but with paper clips to make it a little heavier. Look. Now what's supporting the balloon? Well, there's no table there. No, so it's air coming up, pushing on the bottom that supports the balloon. And why doesn't it fall off one side or the other? Well, because of the pressure on both yeah. sides. Yeah, the same. Okay, now that's doing it with air. Let's do that now with water. Water? Yes. Well. Here. Do you remember that one that, that I had set up when you came in? The balloon on yeah, top of that column of water? water? Okay. Let's first of all try it going down, and let's do it up. Balloon. Oh, would you give me that other one over there that I've cut all the right. mouth off of? There. Watch. Same thing oh, as the air on the table, yes. What's supporting the balloon now? Water the water, pressure. but what keeps it from flying? Oh, like that, I just missed it. What keeps it following the air? Because the stream? pressure on all sides. It's quick if it missed. Okay, now we can do that the other way, too. Up. And I put the screen over because it splashes. The screen helps cut down the splashing. Let me try it. Yeah. You got to bend it back so that the column goes straight up, otherwise it'll be unbalanced. There we are. It's just like the other one. It's exactly like the air, only this time I don't need paper clips on it to help weight it down. Do now, we have done all kinds of things. We have uh, done, and we've done, I think, almost everything that we did with air, we did with water also, didn't we? No, we sure right? did. And the reason most people, as I said before, don't think of, of uh, air as being a fluid or gases as being a fluid is because you normally don't pour them. You normally don't deal with them in the same way. What you, what really, they both are fluids, air and water. Other liquids, uh, syrup is a fluid, you'll, you'll agree with that. Well, various other kinds of gases, hydrogen, oxygen, helium, are all fluids, too. Oh, well. In fact, the, probably the most important aspect of, of the fact that it is a fluid is because airplanes can, birds can fly through it. Uh, so now I think you'll have to admit that air is a fluid, and so is water.